The Sengoku area of Japan's history is an oft-travelled one in video games. The feudal period of the 15th and 16th century was largely dictated by decades of conflict between many warring clans, all striving for control of Japan. It was our old pal Nobunaga, as well as two others, who eventually managed to reunite the whole land under one central government. But not before bloody and costly warfare, propagated by daimyos and their samurai warlords. Allegedly, this game is based in this time period, but save from the samurai on the cover, you wouldn't necessarily know it. The title translates to Ayakashi's Castle, where Ayakashi are these mythical monsters that one might find on a long sea voyage. It appears the demon lord Doman has resurrected some of these monsters, and Nobunaga has tasked you, one person, to go and sort them out, so he can focus on reuniting the territories. There are five castles to crawl through, each named for a legendary beast of Japanese mythology. Each one features one or more floors of approximately 20 by 20 tiles each, starting easy but getting more complex. The aim in each stage is to collect the five pieces of the demon blade, needed to defeat Doman. I will say, I chickened out with this one as there is a lot of text to read, and the surface of the game was so intriguing that I downloaded a ROM hack which translates it into English. I'm sure the story isn't crucial, but nevertheless I wanted to experience the game properly, rather than through a dictionary. One of the first things you're told is to find a map. I strongly suggest making that an early priority any time you're in a new castle. These things are literally mazes, and while the view is clear, it doesn't take a lot to be thoroughly disoriented. Even when you find a map, refer to it a lot, because it doesn't allow you to view the entire floor at once and you can still get lost. As you stumble around these labyrinths, you'll be accosted by lots of random encounters, starting with things like bats and mice, which soon give way to zombies and ghosts. You can attack enemies, use arts, essentially magic, where all you have at first is a healing spell, or something called All Out, which I wouldn't use until you've leveled up a bit. Essentially, your character will just attack until either you or the enemies are dead. It's good if you're grinding, but if not, avoid. As well as the random battles, there are also certain scripted ones with more unique enemies. These are usually just after you open a door, or just in front of a treasure. You can traverse the dungeon smoothly, and the battles don't waste any time, which is great because this is the majority of the experience. The levelling up curve is well calculated. As you get stronger, the enemies become fewer and weaker, which lets you scour the castles much quicker. Entering a new castle presents you with a sharp difficulty spike, but as long as you've been thorough enough, it shouldn't be too much to overcome. Remember where the front door is as well, because at any point you can exit and replenish health and MP. This will also reset the scripted encounters. There are lots of apparent dead ends and rooms that seem not to lead anywhere. These typically have treasure chests in them, which can provide plenty of weapon or defense upgrades. Unfortunately, you can't see these chests even if you're on the tile next to them. They just sort of appear. A simple sprite showing a closed or open chest would help your navigation massively and stop you retracing your steps so much. Don't be put off too much by the initial difficulty. This is one you're going to need patience for. Save and backtrack regularly. It might feel repetitive at times, something not helped by the lack of variation in graphics and music. I wouldn't say the grind went overboard, though. Ayakashi no Shiro isn't really a game for a short 20 minute period. You'll undoubtedly need an hour at least to feel like you've made any progress. I haven't made it to the end yet, but I've reached Castle 3 and it took me a good 5 or 6 hours on and off. Not the best dungeon crawler or RPG by any means, but an entertaining point of interest for anyone looking for a real deep cut in the Game Boy library.